Pentax just released its wireless SDK for Android and I've had a little bit of time to play around with it. So I'm going to show you how to set it up and hopefully save you some time. The very first thing you're going to do is go out to um, Pentax's website and grab the SDK for the wireless cameras. I didn't make an account for that. It wasn't a big deal. Um, once you get to this page and you've logged in, uh, go to the camera SDKs, scroll down to wireless SDK and grab this zip file for Android. Once you have the SDK downloaded, you'll want to create a blank Android project. Um, I didn't do anything special here. I just accepted the defaults. Uh, we're okay with an empty activity. Um, and we're fine with that name for now. Okay, and once your project's showing up, um, ignore any build errors for now because we're going to be changing the Gradle file in a second. Um, but go and we want to drop our SDK into the libs folder. So I'm going to view my whole package go into my app and into the libs folder. And this is where you want to drag and drop the .jar file um, that you downloaded uh, through the SDK. So that was in my downloads folder, I unzipped it. It's here in lib. And I'll take and drag and drop or however you want to do this into my libs folder. Okay, now we're gonna make some changes to the Gradle. Go back to my Android view, go to my Gradle scripts, select the second one. And the changes you'll make, uh, basically you're pulling in some libraries that the SDK relies on. Those changes are listed on this uh, quick start guide here. And just go ahead and make sure to include these in your Gradle file. This line here is also important because it's going to take that jar file that we had and actually make sure it's part of the library in um, this program. I'm going to make one quick change just because um, my uh, Gradle's acting up. Okay, now you want to go to your manifest file and add this line here. Make sure it's under the manifest tag, not the application tag. All right, and then make sure your app builds first. Okay, and if your build's successful, hopefully that's the case. If not, uh, go through any of the errors that it shows up. It probably just has to deal with Android and Gradle. I usually always have to clean it up um, for a beginning project. Now before we write any Java code, I'm going to go into the XML and just on our first page, set some things up so that we can actually confirm that uh, connectivity is happening. Okay, so I like to start off by removing the default text view. Um, and then I find working with some different layouts to be a little bit easier, like this vertical layout. You can really do whatever you want here. Put that layout in there and then some text and just remember what sort of IDs you have here if you are following along. Then we'll add a uh, button as well. This will be our uh, connect button and then maybe one more text view. So we can put that down below this one. And uh, maybe this one just displays something about the camera, like uh, battery life. Okay, so once you have something there that we can work with, uh, we'll go into our Java now. And I'll just real quick pull in those elements that I created. And down here I'll add them. Okay, and then real quick, adding a click listener to the button. I found, you'll see in a minute how this is working for me, but I found that I could really only get the connection to work. Part of it was I need an actual button to kind of trigger the event. So we'll do that real quick. And then we'll use this just to call our method. And now we'll make our connect Method. Now the Java code to connect isn't terribly confusing. In fact, the majority of it is provided for you in the overview under how to connect to cameras. But the only way I was able to get it to work was by following some example code that's provided in the SDK that uses async task, which is built into Android. 
and you can read more about it here, but basically this allows you to open new threads. And part of the benefit of opening new threads deals with network. So I'm assuming that's why I wasn't able to get it to work before without using this. Anyway, you can do more research on your own and see if you can get it to work some other way. I'll just show you how I got it to work this way. So we'll jump back into our code and we'll create a new asynchronous task. And here you can do an alt enter and implement the methods. We're going to be using do in background. And if you want to get rid of this yellow warning, uh, you can also suppress the warning by doing an alt enter in here and doing the suppress at the top. Okay, that's a little bit better. So in the do in background method is where we're going to be writing our code here to actually do the connection. We'll need to create a new camera device object, which I forgot to do, so I'll go ahead and do that. And you can go to the guide and copy this code because we'll be following it fairly closely. Go ahead and import anything that you need to. And we're gonna wrap this in the if statement and say if our camera device object is null, which it should be when we are first starting this program up, then we'll look for compatible devices that we can connect to. And if that list comes back empty, then we'll return some sort of message saying that no devices were found. But if we get past that return and everything works fine, then we'll grab the first element out of that list and save it into our camera device. And we'll add a second condition. If our camera device is not null, but it's been disconnected, we'll want to handle that too and, and reconnect to it. So we'll check if camera device is not connected. And we'll do a similar thing, except we'll check if it's not empty and if it's not empty, save that into our camera device. Okay, we can remove this now. And finally, we'll use this response object to confirm to our client whether or not we've connected. This is actually connecting to that device that we chose from detectable devices. And we'll just check really quick what the response was. If everything was good, we'll return success. If not, return failed remove this and then finally uh, we will override one more method here and this will run once once do this in background or whatever it was called is done and from here we can actually show to the client if we wanted to uh, whether we've been successful or not so using the name of that text field that we had which was device connected text I can set it to the result so that'll be either success or failed. And then just as more fun, we could add into the, let's see, battery life is what we wanted. Oh. And actually you'll wanna protect this like we did before to make sure we're only accessing camera device if it's not null. Okay, and hopefully yours builds. Um, and if it does, it'll look something like that, you know? Um, now, right now, if we didn't do anything, we just hit connect. We'll see no devices were found. So um, it's saying that when it keeps detecting for devices, uh, we set up that error message to say you just can't find any detectable devices. And that's because we haven't actually connected our camera yet. So you will have to connect your camera to the Wi Fi first. I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'll turn the Wi Fi on. And then on my phone, I'll make sure that it connects to my camera first. Okay, connected to my camera. You can see that. And you'll see that the uh, camera now highlighted that icon too, so that the connection is it's, it's, uh, communicating back and forth. Now we go back to our app. Hit connect now. Now we see success that it successfully connected. 
to the camera, we see its battery level at 33% because I've been testing this a while and it's killing my battery. Um, and then finally, you can see that this orange light is blinking. So that's it's established a connection that's going back and forth and um, we can now access images or change settings, live view or whatever else we wanted to do in our app. So hopefully that was helpful and saved you some time. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and post this code somewhere so you can kind of pick through it and good luck on making your app. Let me know if you have any questions.